I'm sorry, um, organic reactions. And then we'll move on into chapter nine. All right, in our first one, we are adding bromine to an alkene. We know that this is going to give us a 1,2 dibromide, and that the stereochemistry is going to be trans. We must show trans stereochemistry some way here. Um, this way would work. You could also use wedge bonds. It's just important that you be able to show that one bromine is up above the ring plane and the other is down below the ring plane. We're adding chloride and carbon tet. We have a simple alkene. Don't have to worry about stereochemistry, even though we do know that this is going to also add trans. We will simply put one chlorine on each of the alkene carbons. And it would look something like this. Again, we're adding bromine and carbon tet. We need to somehow show our stereochemistry. Uh, it's a six-membered ring, so we could draw axial equatorial bonds. Remember, um, if you did that, you probably would want to make both bromines equatorial, or you could just simply do it. My battery's getting dead. Using um, something like wedge bonds. Again, you want to make sure that you clearly show the stereochemistry of both bromines. Another simple addition here, we have an alkene. Don't have to worry about stereochemistry. We'll simply put bromines on each of these carbons. And that's our first set. Any questions? Our next group here, we're still adding halogen. <coughs> Chlorine and carbon tet, and this is styrene, of course. We're simply going to add one bromine to each of the alkene carbons. Remember, benzene rings are special. They really are not cyclohexatriene, so we don't add to the uh, benzene ring at all, only to the alkene. Simple alkene here, no stereochemistry. We're going to add one bromine to each of the alkene carbons. And here we have an exocyclic double bond. Same sort of thing. We're simply going to add one bromine to each carbon. And there we are. Any questions on these three? And the last two for halogen addition. Here we have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 membered ring. <clears throat> we have a double bond in there. It's a cis double bond. Um, we're going to add chlorine. We simply need to be able to show that we have trans addition. Probably the simplest way here would be to use wedge bonds to show that we have opposite bases, opposite ring sides there. Same thing with this guy. Um, we could either use wedge bonds or we could draw the ring out. Um, as long as you clearly show one chlorine up, one chlorine down. Any questions? Now the point of doing something like halogen addition on all 10 of these um, different structures, but simply to drive home the point that this really is simple. All you have to remember is just the basics. Halogen adds to a double bond, it adds trans, you <coughs> have stereochemistry, make sure you show it. Here we're adding HLBR. We have two things to remember here. We're also going to add trans, but 
We have regiochemistry that we must respect for the hydroxyl group. Remember, the hydroxyl group will always add to the carbon that will give us the most stable carbocation. So it is Markhonikov relative to the hydroxyl group. <clears throat> so we look at our first one. Well, this is symmetrical, so it doesn't matter. We simply need to put hydroxyl on one, bromine on the other, and we need to show that they are trans stereochemistry. Our next one, we do have a difference. <clears throat> this is a primary carbon, that's a secondary carbon. Um, we are not going to be able to show stereochemistry, you don't have to, but the regiochemistry must be with the hydroxyl group bonded to the secondary carbon because that's where we have the most stable carbocation. Here we have to show both regiochemistry and stereochemistry. We have a uh, six-membered ring. The tertiary carbon here will give us the most stable carbocation. Therefore, the hydroxyl group will go there, bromine on the other, and we must show that they are trans. I've done it here with wedge bonds. You could also do it with um, diacritorial groups on a nice six-member group. If we do it like that, would it be okay? Well, sort of. I would make my bonds a little older or okay. something, so it's uh, clearer that, uh, <clears throat> that they really are trans to each other. Um, <clears throat> regiochemistry only here. We have a tertiary carbon and a secondary. Hydroxyl group will bond to the tertiary carbon, bromine to the other. Don't need to worry about stereochemistry. And it should look like that. Any question on these four? All right, we're still adding hypohalite. This is HOCl. But it's going to be the same thing. We have styrene, so we have a primary carbon, and we have a benzylic carbon. The benzylic carbon, of course, is the most stable carbocation. Hydroxyl group will go there, and our product should look like this. HOBR. Adding to this simple alkene, again, regiochemistry only, tertiary carbon, primary carbon, hydroxyl group on the tertiary carbon. Our exocyclic double bond, <coughs> tertiary carbon is going to get the hydroxyl group and the halogen on the primary carbon. Questions? And our last two for hypohalite. We have no difference in our double bonds here, so all we have to do is make sure that we clearly show the hydroxyl group and the chlorine add trans to each other. And finally, we have both stereochemistry and regiochemistry to worry about. Hydroxyl group must add to the tertiary carbon, chlorine to the secondary carbon, and they must be trans. Any questions? All right, here we are doing mercury 2 acetate followed by borohydride. We remember in this reaction, we're going to make an alcohol. We have an intermediate mercuridium ion, wind up with an organic mercurial, 
And that's why we need to dump in the ball hydride in order to reduce off the mercury, replace it with a hydrogen. This will give us Markovnikov regiochemistry, but because we wind up with the organic mercurial, not a carbocation, we do not have to worry about rearrangement. So we're nice and symmetrical here. All we have to do is simply show a hydroxyl group on one of the carbons. Here we have a secondary carbon and a primary, the Markonikov carbon, that is the carbon that will give the most stable carbocation, is the secondary, of course. So the hydroxyl group will go there. Tertiary carbon, secondary carbon, hydroxyl group, of course, on the tertiary carbon. That's our most stable carbon cation. I've drawn wedges here. You don't have to do that. Um, but I did. Over here, we have a tertiary carbon and a secondary hydroxyl group on the tertiary carbon. And that's our first four. Any questions? All right, here is styrene. Once again, the benzyl carbon is the most stable carbocation. It will get the hydroxyl group. We have a tertiary carbon and we have a primary carbon. Tertiary carbon is the most stable carbocation, so it gets the hydroxyl group. And finally, for our exocyclic double bond, the tertiary carbon also gets the hydroxyl group. Our last two here, here's our 10-member ring. Again, it doesn't matter where you put it, nor do you have to show stereochemistry. And finally, we have a tertiary carbon and a secondary. Tertiary carbon is our carbocation of choice. And we simply have to draw that. Any questions? Again, the thing to remember is the important points to remember. <clears throat> we have a mercurinium ion. Wind up with an organic mercurial. That's why we need the borohydride to get rid of the mercury. Markonikov regiochemistry and, a, and no rearrangements. All right. Here we have BH3 and THF, <coughs> followed by alkaline peroxide. We know that this is also going to give us an alcohol. But here the regiochemistry is anti Markonikov. This is going to form an intermediate borane. <coughs> the uh, second step here, alkaline peroxide, simply removes the boron and replaces the boron with the hydroxyl. The addition of the hydrogen and the hydroxyl group is cis, or sin, to each other. But we don't have to worry about that in our first one here. All we have to do is place our hydroxyl group somewhere. Same thing with our second one. We have a secondary is carbon. Cis Sorry? Are they cis to each other? Um, the hydrogen we added is on this side. Oh, okay, because I saw that hydrogen. Okay. Our anti Markonikov carbon for our next one is going to be the primary. So that's where the hydroxyl group is going to wind up. 
and we simply make hope and all. Here we have a six-membered ring that we have to worry about showing um, our regiochemistry and our stereochemistry. We're going to put the hydroxyl group on the secondary carbon, the hydrogen on the tertiary carbon, and we must show that those two are cis to each other. I've done this using wedges. Again, the hydrogen and the hydroxyl must be cis. Our next guy down here, <clears throat> don't have to worry about stereochemistry, but the regiochemistry, this is the Tonikov carbon, so the hydroxyl group is going to go on the secondary center. And we'll look something like this. Any questions on these four? Things that you need to remember here. We are making an alcohol. This is an anti-Marconikov alcohol, and the hydrogen and the hydroxyl group add cis. Here we have a simple reduction. We have hydrogen gas and we have platinum. This is a very powerful reductant. We will add one hydrogen atom to each alkene carbon. We also have to show that we have stereochemistry. Can you skip one slide? This one? Um, it's not in mine. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Missing in action. <laughs> so we must show that we have cis stereochemistry. That is both hydrogen add to the same phase. Yeah, we skipped the lot actually. We skipped one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven. Oh yeah? <laughs> well. Okay, well, we're here anyway. <laughs> These are so simple you can just do them as quickly as you can write them. So anyway. Uh, we need to somehow show that both hydrogens come on from the same face. Um, they can either be up or down, it doesn't matter, but um, we must show cis stereochemistry. Same thing here, we have two methyl groups. We will add hydrogen from one side only, and we must show this something like this would work. Again, both hydrogens are the same side of our ring planes. All right, my next slide. We're up here with osmium tetroxide. Osmium tetroxide followed by sodium hydrogen. This should be sulfite, not sulfate. Um, this is going to give us a 1,2 diol. The stereochemistry of our 1,2 diol is going to be cis. We need the second step with the sodium hydrogen sulfite because we are left with an osmium ester. The osmium ester does not break down spontaneously. You need to reduce it off with hydrogen sulfite. What you have to remember to show here is the stereochemistry. Again, both hydroxyl groups are the same face of the molecule. Ozonolysis. Ozone followed by dissolving metal reduction. Now, dissolving metal reduction, that's a term we will use often. If you take zinc and you dump it into aqueous acid, it fizzes, okay? The process of fizzing produces hydrogen radicals. The hydrogen radicals can add to alkenes and other things we'll see next semester and give us um, reduction, overall reduction. So 
Something like zinc and acid is dissolving metal reduction. Ozone forms an intermediate ozonide where we bridge the alkene with three oxygens, break it open with our dissolving metal reduction. Operationally, what we do here is we're going to split our alkene. We're going to split it right down the middle. Ozonolysis is very, very gentle, so it gives aldehydes and ketones. Okay? So all you're going to do is convert each alkene carbon into a carbonyl. Our first one here, we have a methyl group attached and a hydrogen. Second one, we have two hydrogens, so we have acetaldehyde and formaldehyde. Now our next reaction, this is acidic permanganate. There are two permanganate reactions that we need to remember. One is going to give us a 1,2 diol, again with cis stereochemistry, but that is alkaline permanganate. Acidic permanganate is an oxidant. It will split the double bond. And it's a powerful oxidant, unlike ozone. Um, anytime you have a hydrogen on, and on one of your alkene carbons, acidic permanganate will convert that into an OH group. The alkene carbon itself goes to a carbonyl, which means this is going to wind up in a carboxylic acid. This is going to wind up as a ketone. So we split our double bond. Anytime there's a hydrogen, that's going to be a carboxylic acid. And they're going to be separated by one, two, three, four CH2 groups. Carboxylic acid and methyl ketone. Once again, acidic permanganate. <coughs> We have a hydrogen here, so our secondary carbon is going to be a carboxylic acid. We have two hydrogens here, so if you want to think about replacing the OH, I'm sorry, the hydrogen with an OH group, this would give carbonate or carbonic acid, same thing as CO2. Therefore, we're going to split this to CO2 and a carboxylic acid. Terminal carbon, CO2. Secondary carbon, a carboxylic acid. Once again, osmium tetroxide. Once again, these should be sulfite, not sulfate. Osmium tetroxide, we're simply going to convert the alkene into a cis 1,2 diol. We styrene, we don't have to worry about stereochemistry. So we're simply going to add a hydroxyl group to each of these carbons. Same thing here. We're going to add a hydroxyl group each of the carbons. Don't have to worry about the stereochemistry. And finally, ozonolysis one more time. We're going to split our alkene double bond. Ozone is going to leave the hydrogens alone. Therefore, we will get a ketone from our tertiary carbon, and we will get formaldehyde from our primary carbon. Question on these guys. All right, in my slide set, this is the last one. And we have our 10 member ring alkene. We have acidic permanganate one more time. Remember, each of these alkene carbons has a hydrogen. So they will both be 
carboxylic acids. And our last one here, this again should be sulfite, not sulfate. <clears throat> Osmium tetroxide, we're going to put a hydroxyl group on each of the alkene carbons. Here we have to make sure to show that they are cis stereochemistry. Any questions? Other than where did the other six slides go? With this one, can you draw it like that? Four simple alkene reactions like we've done here. You, at this point, should be able to draw the products pretty much as fast as you can draw the structures. So it's all the way to no brainer time. <clears throat> My battery here is dying. I might have to call cancel lecture. Oh, but we have to do chapter 9, so we can't cancel lecture, can we? Chapter 9, remember, after we finish chapter 9, we are going to have our second hour exam, okay? Uh, second hour exam is going to feature reactions of, of alkenes, alkynes, and, you know, just the general background stuff from chapter 6 and 7. So, Okay, alkynes, carbon-carbon triple bond. <clears throat> long, long time ago, we talked about single, double, and triple bonds. Remember, a single bond, we're talking about sp3 hybridization. We have four uh, bonds arranged in a tetrahedron. Uh, one has three p orbitals to give the hybridized uh, structure. For a double bond, we have three sigma bonds for each of our alkene carbons, and we have one pi bond constructed from the remaining p orbitals. This is sp squared, it's trigonal geometry. For our triple bond, we have linear, linear geometry. We have two sigma bonds on each carbon, and we have two pi bonds. Now, the pi bonds originate from the two leftover p orbitals. Remember, we take one s and one p, we combine them, and make our linear structure this way. All of these are simple sigma bonds. Each of the carbons, however, has two p orbitals left over. So we must show these p orbitals uh, on each of the carbons, something like that. And the arrangement here is such that they can overlap very easily. And when they do, they form two sets of pi bonds. <clears throat> when we call this a triple bond, we're talking about one sigma bond and two pi bonds. Once again, our geometry is linear. <clears throat> because we have all of these electrons, pi electrons here in between the carbons, if we look at the electrostatic potential map, not too surprising, we have a nice big band of electrons. And again, this is going to be the center for the reactions at alkynes. But before we do any alkyne reactions, the first thing we always have to do with a new functional group is name it something, right? The rules are very simple we've done uh, nomenclature. If we have a triple bond, our longest chain, our parent chain, must contain the alkyne. J 
just like with an alkene, we want to number it. So the triple bond has the lowest possible number. And number three, we're going to add a Y and E to indicate that it is an alkyne. And of course, we're going to number the substituents. If we add more, we would call it a diine or a triine. So if we look at this guy, our longest chain containing the alkyne is going to be starting up here, going either up or down. <clears throat> we want to give the alkyne the lowest possible number, so we're going to let this be carbon number one. We see that we have a uh, ethyl group here at carbon number three. So this is going to be a pentine. We have to show that it's a one pentine to tell us where the triple bond is. And we have an ethyl group at carbon three. Three ethyl, one pentine. Now we don't have to worry about triple bonds and rings, do we? Because linear geometry really doesn't go very well with cyclic compounds. But quite often, especially with natural products, you will see compounds that have both double and triple bonds in them. The rule here is that if there's a if it makes no difference in terms of number sequence, and you have a double bond and a triple bond, the double bond will get the lowest number. So in this molecule, we're going to start numbering down here by the alkene. Now, <clears throat> this is still going to be an alkyne. Alkyne is going to dictate the name here. But the numbering is dictated by the alkene. Okay? <clears throat> we need to show that this is a uh, octine, but it's also a one e. The way we do that is something like this. We're going to start off calling this a one octene. But we must show that out here, in carbon number seven, we have an alkyne. We do that this way. One octene, seven ine. Now you'll know that just by magic, the last E here disappeared. That's not a mistake. So one octene, if you will. That's our double bond. 7 I. If we add this, our alkene would no longer dictate the um, nomenclature, I'm sorry, the numbering. So carbon 1 is going to be here by the um, triple bond. So this is going to be a one octene, I'm sorry, one octine. And we're going to have a double bond here in carbon six. We would name it something like this. This is a six octene one ine. But there's something missing in this name, isn't there? Our double bond does have stereochemistry, right? What is this? Well, we could say it's trans, but we can't use that anymore, can we? Because we know better. So this is going to be E stereochemistry. E, six 
octane one pi. Any questions? Now, of course, the uh, one that was on the exam is nothing nearly as simple as this. More like this. So what would you name this guy? Again, I said with natural products, um, you can get combinations of uh, double and triple bonds. The simplest name here is Hemlock. <laughs> And that's poor Socrates that was forced to drink this stuff. It's um, quite toxic. Any questions? All right. We struggled and we went through some sort of shock when we saw all the reactions of um, alkenes. Well, we also have reactions of alkynes. But the good news is that if you understand the alkene reactions, the alkyne reactions are darn near the same thing. Because we have two pi systems, we simply do some things twice. If we add hydrogen halide to an alkyne, we're going to add uh, two moles of HX, HBr, or HI, HCl, and our regiochemistry is going to be Mark Monikoff. <clears throat> so here we identify our Mark Monikoff carbon, and we simply add two moles of halogen to that carbon, two moles of hydrogen to the other. If we're adding halogen itself, again we're going to add two moles, so we will form a 1, 1, 2, 2 tetra ally. Now these guys are going to seem a little strange to you. We know that if we had an alkene, if we did an acid catalyzed hydration, we would get an alcohol, right? Here we get a carbonyl. Now we'll explain how this happens in just a little bit. <coughs> With this, we get Markonikov regiochemistry for our oxygen. For hydroboration oxidation, we get anti Markonikov regiochemistry. And we'll talk about this little bit of magic in a second. There are three ways that we will be able to reduce a triple bond. If we use hydrogen and something like platinum, we just reduce the heck out of it, all the way to the alkyne, alkane. If we use something called Linlar catalyst, that's hydrogen adsorbed to porous nickel or a poison catalyst, we're going to get an alkene with our hydrogens adding cis. And finally, if we do a dissolving metal reduction, with lithium in liquid ammonia, we will get an alkene with trans stereochemistry. Finally, down here, <clears throat> we've actually seen this before back in chapter six, I think. If you take sodium amide and a primary alkyl halide, you can make an alkyne. What you do is make the anion first, and that's a nucleophile internecine to action. So let's start at the bottom and work our way up. Let's do this guy first. If we take a terminal alkyne, the hydrogen on a terminal alkyne is acidic. Now it's a carbon acid, <clears throat> so it's not acidic in the way that we're used to thinking about whole acids, HCl or something like that. This has a pKa of about 20 or so. So it's a very, very, very strong base, but nonetheless, in terms of carbon compounds, it is rather acidic. Sodium amide. 
Sodium amide, you take little chunks of sodium, a vat of liquid ammonia, and you drop them in. They fizz, but when they're finished fizzing, they leave the amide anion in H2, which is a very strong base, and of course, the sodium anion. This is just the same as dropping sodium into water, where we would form sodium hydroxide. This is just a very strong base, and is strong enough to pull off the terminal hydrogen. If we then take this alkyne and a primary or a methyl alkyl halide, we can get a very simple SN2 reaction where the anion will attack the electrophilic carbon. The iodide is our leaving group in this example and we wind up with an alkylated alkyne. It's actually a very nice reaction. Um, of course, you can only do it with terminal alkynes, and it really works best for primary or methyl alkyl halides. The reaction is just a very simple SN2. Again, we're going to take our anion, attack the electrophilic carbon, Halogen is our leaving group. It's an SN2 reaction, so it's concerted. Lehner central atom. And we wind up with our alkylated alkyne. The movie. I can get it to start. There we go. The acetylide anion is going to attack the electrophilic center, exerted transition state, planar carbon in the middle, and there's our final product. Any questions? Nice, simple reaction. All right, the addition of HCl or HBr or HI to a triple bond. Again, we're going to add two moles of our halogen acid. <clears throat> we look at our reactant here. We have a primary carbon and a secondary. So this would be the Markovnikov carbon, the one that would give the most stable of the cations. The actual reaction is stepwise. First thing we do is add one mole of HCl. Again, the chlorine going to the secondary or the Markovnikov carbon. This is called a vinyl halide. Vinyl is a old name, trivial name, for a double bond. We are all familiar with vinyl pores, stuff like that. Well, they're derived from usually from vinyl chloride, actually. But uh, our double bond, the halogen attached directly to it, this is a vinyl halide. This is also our Markovnikov carbon and our intermediate. Because we're next to a halogen now, that makes it nicely uh, stable as a carbon cation to give the di halide. So just like you learned for the other, alkenes, Markovnikov regiochemistry, we just need to remember that we add two of them. Any questions? All right, when we add halogen to an alkene, we form a 1,2 dihalide, intermediate bromonium ion, okay? Um, we're going to do the same sort of thing here, except we're just going to do it twice. The bromine is going to sit on the pi system. We will form an intermediate compound like this. This is a trans vinyl dihalide. So the same sort of uh, reaction we had with an alkene. Again, our intermediate is trans. And now we're simply going to add a second mole here 
to make the 1122 Tetra ally. Any questions? We talked about the addition of water to triple bonds. I said that these were going to give us carbonyl compounds. Well, they do, but it's a stepwise reaction. First thing that happens is we're going to do a Markovnikov addition to our alkyne. And we're going to add the hydroxyl group to the Markovnikov carbon, the one that forms the most stable carbocation. So this adds right here. This gives us an intermediate called an enol. An enol is a carbon-carbon double bond with a hydroxyl group attached to one of the carbons. When we get to chapter 18, 19, 20, and stuff like that next semester, you'll see that enols are a very, very important player in the reactions of carbonyl compounds. Now, an enol is very unstable. It exists in equilibrium with the carbonyl compound. Most, this is less than 1%, maybe 0.1% at equilibrium. So what happens to the enol is that it will undergo what's called a tautomerization. That's an internal rearrangement. We take the hydrogen from here and simply move it to the other alkene carbon. That makes this a carbonyl, and in this case, this is now a methyl. Now, it's important that you understand this and be able to draw the mechanism. Other thing I want to point out before we leave the slide, in order to make this work, you need a little bit of mercury too in there. So a little bit of mercury and your acid, and the thing goes. Again, the mercury will bond to the triple bond, making it much more electric. Now, the mechanism for the tautomerization. Like I said, we're going to take the hydrogen off the OH group, and it's going to appear down here on the other carbon of the alkene. <coughs> the way this works is something like this. We need a base of some sort, and we need a proton donor. This is in aqueous acid, so we have lots of uh, chances for both water to serve as this, and of course acid to serve as a proton donor. The base will pull off this hydrogen. As it does, the electrons go in to get the carbon-carbon double, carbon-oxygen double bond. This would wind up as a negatively charged carbon, so it will very quickly pick up a proton, and presto, we have a carbonyl. Again, this is an equilibrium. I didn't show it this way, but this is an equilibrium. Anytime you have a carbonyl compound like this in um, either alkaline or acidic solution, you will have a small amount of enol. Again, almost all of it, however, is ketone. Make sure you're able to take an enol and show me how to move these electrons to make a carbonyl. Again, operationally, we started off with a triple bond here. The carbonyl appears on the Markovnikov carbon. If we did hydroboration oxidation on an alkene, we would wind up with an anti Markovnikov alcohol, right? Well, here we're going to wind up with an anti Markovnikov enol. 
secondary carbon, primary carbon, <clears throat> we're going to uh, put the hydroxyl group here on the primary carbon. Our enol should look like this. This is a hydrogen. We're going to pick up a hydrogen off this. This enol collapses. This gives us our double bond. Pick up a hydrogen here. And we made an aldehyde. The simple things to remember, again, for acid-catalyzed hydration, we get an American Harkonikov, enol, or high-deboration oxidation, and anti-Harkonikov. So the same sort of thing you had to learn. Um, you could just apply it this way. Any questions? All right. Like I said earlier, there are three ways that we're going to reduce a triple bond. <clears throat> Hydrogen with either platinum or palladium usually on carbon, so you have something to spoon out, um, is a very, very powerful reductant. This will add <coughs> two moles of hydrogen to our triple bond, and we go all the way down to the alkane. Any questions? Very, very simple. The other two ways we're going to do it are using a poison catalyst or dissolving metal. Now, I said here we have our platinum or palladium on carbon. That's a real powerful catalyst. You can take and really screw up this catalyst by putting in sulfur. So if you did platinum or palladium on barium sulfates, you get what's called a poison catalyst. And we all have catalytic converters in our cars these days, right? Um, because they are platinum or palladium based, you have to be very careful the fuel that you put in there. Because if you put in high sulfur gasoline, you wind up with a poison catalyst. And it no longer does what it's supposed to. Um, Lindlar catalyst is just a, um, well, it is a poor catalyst. It will not reduce double bonds at all. <clears throat> and what it is is a porous nickel with hydrogen already adsorbed in it. It's real handy. You can just scoop it out of the bottle, dump it in. Uh, don't need a tank of hydrogen gas and stuff like that. For Lindlar catalysts, if we start off with an alki alkyne, we wind up with an alkene, and once again, it has cis stereochemistry. Just like the addition to a double bond, both hydrogens come on from the same side. So either a poison catalyst or Lindlar gives us this. The other is our dissolving metal reduction. Now we saw sodium previously dissolved in liquid ammonia. That gave us sodium amide, right? When it's done fizzing. Sodium amide, strong base. That's good. In a dissolving metal reduction, you actually have your substrate in there while it's fizzing. Lithium is generally used here, lithium in liquid ammonia. Um, it fizzes, and as it does, it produces hydrogen radicals. Now, these will add stepwise to our triple bond. Because they're adding stepwise, you're going to form the most stable intermediate. We, we know that a cis double bond is much more crowded than a trans double bond. Therefore, this will always go to the trans stereochemistry. 
We just add our hydrogens one at a time. Any questions? <clears throat> acidic permanganate. Now, acidic permanganate, we saw with uh, alkenes, split the carbon-carbon double bond. Well, acidic permanganate is also going to split a carbon-carbon triple bond. When it does, each of the alkyne carbons will become a carboxylic acid. So it's very simple. This is going to give us benzoic acid. Here we have a methyl group. So this is acetic acid. If we happen to have a terminal alkyne, we would get CO2. Okay? Let's just very quickly run through a couple examples. Here we have an isometrical alkyne. Uh, we are adding HCl. We know, just like with an alkene, we're going to form an alkyl ally. But because it's a triple bond, we're going to do it twice. Both halogens are going to be on the same carbon. Doesn't matter which one. And it would look something like that. We're doing hydroboration oxidation here, aren't we? If this was an alkene, we know we would get an anti Markovnikov alcohol. <clears throat> that means the OH would go to this primary carbon. We're going to get an anti Markovnikov enol here, aren't we? So, this is going to be a carbonyl, and this guy will be a CH2. Our next one here is dissolving metal reduction. <clears throat> Lithium actively dissolving in liquid ammonia. Going to put hydrogens on each of the alkyne carbons. We know deep in our heart that this is a trans addition. However, there's no serial chemistry here, so we simply have this as our product. You feel that deep in our heart. Deep in your heart. <laughs> Once again, we're doing hydroboration oxidation. We are going to generate an enol. It's going to be anti Markovnikov. As we look at our reactant here, we have a benzylic carbon and we have a secondary carbon. The most stable carbocation will be at the benzylic center moment. Therefore, we're going to put our oxygen here. Because it's a triple bond, it's going to form an enol. That means that this at equilibrium is going to be a carbonyl, and this will be a CH2. Oxygen to the anti Markovnikov carbon. This is hydration in the presence of mercury. Here we're going to form a Markovnikov enol. The OH is going to go here to the secondary carbon and the hydrogen to the primary carbon. It's going to give us an enol once again. That means this is going to be a carbonyl and this will be a CH3.
Here we have an adamantane structure. I always put this on the exam just to laugh at how you draw it. <clears throat> it's actually very simple. You have a six-membered ring, and you simply bridge it up at each of the corners. But we are reacting this with sodium amide. That sodium previously dissolved in liquid ammonia. That's going to give us the anion at this carbon. The alkyne anion is then going to attack bromomethane, SN2 reaction, methyl group on this carbon. Thanks. <laughs> Isn't it fun to draw it? I love it. I wish I And here's another one that's almost always on an exam in one form or another. Here we have an alkyne, and we have three different reduction conditions. Go ahead and draw your three products. Lithium actively dissolving in liquid ammonia. That is going to be a radical reaction. We are going to form a trans alkene. Hydrogen, palladium on carbon, very powerful catalyst. This is going to reduce this all the way to the alkane. Once again, the benzene rings are not bothered. Now, you can reduce a benzene ring, um, but you need lots of patience. Typically, you use fairly high pressure, high pressure, high pressure, hydrogen, hydrogen gas. So, under these conditions, you can easily isolate the alkane. Finally, Lindlar catalyst. We know this is a for catalyst, we will add one mole of hydrogen, and it will be cis stereochemistry. So there's our three products. Any questions? We're adding chlorine, we're adding HBr peroxides to an alkene, just to remind you. And finally, we're doing a reduction once again. <clears throat> Go ahead and draw your products. If we add halogen to a triple bond, we're going to form a 1, 1, 2, 2 tetra ally. Simply add two moles of chlorine, and it should look something like that. I stuck an alkene in here just to see if you were paying attention. We remember this is a radical reaction. We're going to form the anti Markonikov alkyl halide. So the bromine is going to wind up on our secondary carbon. And finally, we remember from our previous slide, Lindlar catalyst, poor catalyst, cis alkene. Any questions? All right, now we get to do the really fun part of organic chemistry. We know all of these reactions. We just know them, don't we? 
by heart. Right. Deep in your heart. <laughs> so now we're going to do synthesis. We're going to take these reactions and use them for something. By synthesis, what we're going to do is we are going to design simple one-step syntheses that will give us each of these products. Now synthesis in organic chemistry really can be fun. <clears throat> this is why people take organic chemistry, to learn the logic. Once you know the language, that is the reactions, now you get to apply it to logic purposes. So we're going to take these one at a time, and we're going to do them. The way you do a synthesis, I mentioned this before, is you talk to yourself quietly. Okay? So we look at this alkyl halide, and we say to ourselves, what is it? How many ways do I know to make it? What reaction could I do that will give me this product? So, step one, this is an alkyl halide, no problem. We know that we have regiochemistry with alkyl halides, Markovnikov and anti. This guy is an anti-Markovnikov alkyl halide. That means the halogen is not bonded to the carbon that would give us the most stable carbocation. So this is an anti markonikov alkyl halide. Now, how many ways do you know to make anti markonikov alkyl bromides? One, right? Just one. That's the addition, radical addition of HBr to an alkene. So your task is simply to write the appropriate alkene and clearly show me the reaction conditions. We could make this guy We could make this guy with this alkene, HBr peroxide, again, anti Markovnikov alkyl bromide. We could not make it from this alkene with HBr. <clears throat> if we use HBr peroxide, the bromine would go here. If we did just HBr, we would get a rearrangement one because that would give us a carbocation intermediate. This, the bromine, would wind up on our tertiary carbon. So this does not work. This is the one that works for you. Again, this simply shows what I just said. If we tried to use this alkene in the presence of HBr, we would form the secondary carbocation. We would get a 1,2 hydride transfer. And we would wind up with the tertiary alkyl halide. So only the one way works. Our next molecule in our list was this halohydrin. Now we look at this molecule and we say, what is it? Well, it's a halohydrin, isn't it? Here you have to worry just a second, <clears throat> because once you identify that it's a halohydrin, you have to make darn sure that the hydroxyl group is on the Markonikov carbon, because otherwise it's going to get really complicated. But, fortunately, this is on the Markonikov carbon. We could make this from a very simple alkene. 
Carbo cation must be formed at the ring junction. That's this. So that works fine. All you have to do then is write the structure of the appropriate alkene and put down the reaction conditions. Go ahead, do that. Both of these must have been alkene carbons. So we're looking at an exocyclic pentene, cyclopentene. You could put down HOBr as your reaction conditions. That works. Or you could be a little fancier and use embromosic cinnamon and water DMSO mixture. Now about this time, students start saying, oh my goodness, do you mean I have to remember all of these things? Well, yeah, but, but remember, your exam is going to look something like two pages of every reaction you've ever seen in your life, followed by a page or two of synthesis, more or less like this. So if you can't quite remember the reaction conditions, and you're on page four, you just go back to page one and say, oh, there it is and copy them down. So it's a built-in sheet with all your reaction conditions for you. Let's look at this guy. We look at it and say, what is it? Well, let's say 1,2-dibromide. And our stereochemistry is trans. That is such a simple thing, isn't it? There's only one way that we know to make trans 1,2-dibromides. Go ahead and draw the appropriate alkene and put in your reaction conditions. These must have been alkene carbons right here. So we simply need a double bond here. Here's our ethyl group. And we just show bromine or bromine and carbon tet as our reaction conditions. The next one on our list something like this. All right, so we look at this and we say, what kind of compound is it? Well, it's an alkyl bromide, isn't it? Next, we look at it and we say, what is our regiochemistry? Is the bromine bonded to the carbon that would give the most stable carbocation? Well, it's bonded to a tertiary carbon, isn't it? And it's sitting next to a secondary. So yeah, this has Markhanikov regiochemistry. So go ahead and draw the appropriate alkene and put in your reaction conditions. Alkene. Well, this must be an alkene carbon where the halogen is attached. So a nice simple way to do this would be to simply make this a double bond, right? Is that the only one that would work? Of course not. We could also have put in this alkene, correct? because we would have more conic competition, and the halogen would go here. 
And actually, we could have even put in this alkene. Now, how can we get away with this one? Well, we form the secondary carbon cation, it would rearrange, and then we would add to the tertiary center. You just have to write one little bit. Yep, just have to write one, unless I say write three. Now these are examples of freestyle synthesis. <clears throat> By the time you finish 235, so next semester, you'll be able to do syntheses that have all three, sometimes four steps to them. So you work backwards one step at a time and you get your starting material. This exam we're doing one step, okay? Simple one step. There's another way that I present these on exams, and that is I give you a selection of starting materials. I ask you to select one of these and to put in the reaction conditions necessary to make a compound. So go ahead and do that. We want to make this alkyl bromide we have to use one of these guys. Remember, you're supposed to be talking to yourself. You say, this is an alkyl halide. You look at his regiochemistry. Is this Markovnikov or not? It is not. We have a tertiary center. This is bonded, and a secondary center. This is bonded to a primary carbon. Therefore, this is an anti markonikov alkyl halide. <clears throat> we know that we're going to do a radical addition of HBr. So we look at these guys and try to pick out the one that's going to work best. We're going to add our bromine to the end of the chain. Right? That means that the carbon at the end of the chain had to be a carbon-carbon double bond. <clears throat> so these guys are out. This is the one we want. And our reaction conditions, simply HBr peroxide. All right, what if I gave you this same sort of problem and I ask you to make this alcohol? Step one, you would look at it and say, it's an alcohol. Not only that, but it's a tertiary alcohol. OH is attached to a tertiary carbon. Now I know two ways to make alcohols. One is going to give us Markonikov regiochemistry. One is going to give us anti-Markonikov. Therefore, look at our molecule here, tertiary carbon, secondary, primary. This is a Markonikov alcohol. So go ahead and choose a starting material and put in your reaction conditions.
in order to make this tertiary alcohol. We're going to add this to our tertiary carbon. The tertiary carbons up here. These guys, <coughs> either of these obviously would work, but this guy is going to work too because we would have a rearrangement. Remember, it's a carbocation mechanism. So, all of these will yield the same alcohol. All we need to do is show acid and water as our reaction conditions, and either of these would work. Remember this last one? We rearrange our carbocation. We can also do this in a more civilized way using mercury 2 acetate followed by boron hydride. <clears throat> but remember, mercury 2 acetate does not give us rearrangement, does it? So if we used mercury 2 acetate, it would have to be one of these guys as our reactant. Any questions? All right, look at this guy, decide what it is, and come up with a simple synthesis. It's an alkyl halide. What would you call the regiochemistry here? What you really want to do is ask, is the halogen attached to the most stable carbocation that you could form? It's attached to a secondary carbon, and we have a tertiary carbon in the molecule. Therefore, we're going to have to classify this guy as anti marconic Allergen is not attached to the most stable carbocation. Okay, <clears throat> we want to look at these. Our halogen is going to be on our secondary carbon. Our secondary carbons up here are these guys. And we need to do an anti Markonikov addition. So, for our first one here, if we did anti Markonikov, the halogen would go here, wouldn't it? For our second one, tertiary center, secondary, it would go here, and here, no reaction at all. So, this is the one we want anti Markonikov. So, we're simply going to do this alkene and HBr peroxides. Okay, I will hush for a second. Go ahead and do the exercise on this one. Look at it, we say it's an alcohol. Not only that, but it's a primary alcohol. And we have a tertiary center and a secondary center in our molecule. 
So if we had to give this guy a label, we would call it anti-Markhanikov. Now, <clears throat> we're adding to the carbon that's adjacent to the methyl group, right? Carbon that's adjacent to the methyl group up here are going to be these guys. Here we have a single bond, here we have a single bond, here we have a double bond. Only one that works is going to be this guy. In order to make anti-Markhanikov regiochemistry, our reaction conditions are just going to be BH3 followed by alkaline peroxide. Let's do one more of these simple ones. See, my job here is just to convince you just how simple this is, so that when you come into the exam, you will be so full of confidence, right? This, of course, is an alkyl halide attached to a tertiary center. That means that this is the most stable carbon cation, and it is therefore Markhanikov. We're going to do this with an ionic addition with a carbon cation intermediate. We are adding to our tertiary center which is going to be this guy here. But once again, because we have a carbocation intermediate, if we use this as our substrate, we would still get rearrangement to get the tertiary alkyl halide. All you have to do is show something like that. Now, just to make synthesis problems on exams a little more, a little more, a little more, interest, more interesting, I'm just showing three possible um, starting materials. Sometimes you'll see a problem that looks like this. And what you have to do is fish through this strange collection and come up with what you need. Now, it's intimidating when you have lots and lots of compounds, but you know it's actually fairly simple because you know we're looking for a four carbon unit, right? So you can certainly eliminate a whole lot of these right away. The only four carbon units that you're going to deal with, <clears throat> well, let's see. This is a cis 1 2 dial. How do we know that? So we draw on this so that our two hydroxyl groups are on the same side. So it's a cis 1, 2 dial. <clears throat> we also know that when we line up our two hydroxyl groups, that the stereochemistry of our methyls is going to be trans. That is, we line these two things up so they're adjacent to each other. We have one methyl up and one methyl down. Now, we look at our possible candidates. For our four carbon backbone, <clears throat> the only four carbon backbones we have are actually one, two, three, four, this guy too. So we have four possible four carbon backbones. Actually, this and this are the same compound, aren't they? Yeah. 
All right. We don't want the alkyl bromide. We want an alkene. We have two alkenes to choose from, trans stereochemistry or cis. Remember, we looked at this. Our methyl groups are on opposite bases, aren't they? That means for this reaction, we want the trans alkene. All right, to make our cis-1,2-diol, there are two ways that we know, osmium tetroxide or alkaline permanganate. Both of those work. Alkaline permanganate is certainly the simplest. Transalkene, we have a trans set of methyl groups and a cis set of hydroxyl. Any questions? All right, I will hush for a second. Make this aldehyde. Well, I gave it away, but it's an aldehyde, okay? How many ways do we know to make aldehydes? Two, actually. Two. We can do ozonolysis on an alkene, right? That will give us an aldehyde. Or we could take an alkyne and do anti martonikoff hydration to get the enol, which is the same as the aldehyde. If we did it by hydration of an alkyne, we would note that the oxygen is bonded to the primary carbon. It's a secondary carbon molecule, so this would be anti marconikoff And finally, we're looking for a three-carbon backbone. So we look at our collection here. If we're looking for an alkyne, there are two alkynes we could work with. If we split this with acidic permanganate, that would give us carboxylic acids, wouldn't it? And not only that, we would have one, two, three, four carbons, five carbons in each half. So this guy's out. The only alkyne that's going to work is going to be this guy. Now, our reaction conditions. We have one, two, three carbons. We must add the oxygen to the terminal carbon. That's anti Markonikoff hydration, BH3, THF, followed by alkaline peroxide. Remember, this gives an intermediate enol. On an exam, I will darn near guarantee you that I will ask you to draw the intermediate enol and show the tautomerization mechanism. Make sure you got that. All right. So we have finished chapter six, seven, eight, and nine. And now it's time for an exam. The exam is a while off, don't worry. November 10th. Again, it'll cover six, seven, eight, and nine. 
Um, our lecture on the third, we will have the EU review. So <clears throat> before that, I will put the sample exam up on Blackboard. The quiz. The quiz will be handed out um, the day before the, well, the Thursday before the exam. So the quiz is not on Blackboard. The quiz is a sheet. Both sides of nothing but reactions. Just to give you practice at the sticker shock of looking at all those reactions. Finally, on Thursday, we will do Lab 10.2. That's different than it's in your syllabus. This is our friend, the Finkelstein reaction. Um, on Blackboard, there's a handout that explains the Finkelstein reaction. Take a look at that, and again in your book, it's 10.2. All right. I have to go to Walgreens and buy a battery. <laughs>